Today we're going to be talking about the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is a very important part of planet Earth. It protects us, it keeps us at a comfortable temperature, and it also puts on a beautiful light show if you live towards one of the north or south poles. Now the atmosphere is made up of several different types of gas. Let's take a look at the composition of the atmosphere. One of the gases, nitrogen, makes up about 78% of all the gases in the atmosphere. The next most abundant is oxygen. It comes in at about 21%. And then we have argon, a little bit less than 1%. And then finally, carbon dioxide, 0.04%. So four hundredths of one percent, but a very important gas because it's one of our principal greenhouse gases that we'll talk about later. Now, all these gases are held in place by the force of gravity. It turns out that a lot of smaller planets in moons don't have an atmosphere. That's because they don't have enough mass, and mass is responsible for gravity and they don't have enough gravity to hold these molecules close to their surface. So they don't have any. But we're lucky we have those, and they make a big difference for us. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the atmosphere. And I'm going to break the atmosphere up into five layers based on whether the temperature is increasing or decreasing. Now let's go ahead and draw a graph of these five layers. I'm going to draw the y-axis and then the x-axis. Here's the x, up here's the y. Now our y-axis is going to be altitude. So this is increasing altitude. And the x-axis is going to be temperature. So this is increasing temperature. And I'm going to break this up into five zones. So here we go. That's one, two, three, four, and five. And by the way, these are not drawn to scale. So this is a simple diagram. Now if we start somewhere around here at a reference point, and we say that this is about 57 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the average temperature on planet Earth, 57 degrees Fahrenheit. And let's go from there. As we go up in this lower layer here, as we go up, it's going to get colder and colder and colder and colder until finally we hit the next layer. And then it gets warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer. And then it gets colder and colder and colder and colder. And then big change, we get really warm here. And then finally, as we head into our last layer, it gets colder and colder until we get into the coldness of outer space. All right, so let's give these various layers some names. We'll start with the bottom. This is called the troposphere. Now, the troposphere is where we live. This is the lower layer. Uh, this is where all the weather occurs. This is where most of the gases we just talked about are actually located down here in the troposphere. And we got a lot of greenhouse gases down here too. A lot of greenhouse gases. In fact, if it weren't for responsible, if it weren't for those greenhouse gases, the average temperature on Earth would be somewhere around zero degrees Fahrenheit. A pretty big difference from 57 degrees Fahrenheit. Now if we go up to the next layer, that's called the stratosphere. Now the stratosphere is going to be very important because the bottom part of the stratosphere is where we're going to find the ozone. And the ozone is sort of a bluish gas with a molecular formula of O3, three oxygen atoms connected to each other. And this ozone is so important because it filters out the majority of ultraviolet radiation that rains down on us from the sun. It really protects us from skin cancers and cataracts, and it also protects all the plants on planet Earth. In fact, all the living organisms on planet Earth 
from, from uh, the damaging effects of that high frequency radiation. Now, the next layer is going to be called the mesosphere. And meso means middle, because it's the middle layer. And not a lot to say about the mesosphere, but we can say one thing. This is where shooting stars occur. Shooting stars are little bits of dust and rock that enter our atmosphere from outer space. And as they enter our atmosphere, they start to run into all these gases. And those gases start to, uh, to heat those little bits of dust up due to friction. And once they heat up enough, they actually glow, they're so hot, and they actually burn up before they, they hit the uh, ground. Most of the times, that is, they burn up. So this is the layer where you actually see those shooting stars up in the sky. Now the next layer is going to be the thermosphere. Thermo means heat, and you have a big heat change here, big temperature change in the thermosphere. The thermosphere is also where the International Space Station orbits. Right? And this is also where you got a beautiful light show if you live towards the North Pole or the South Pole. Those auroras. Right? You got the aurora borealis and the aurora australis. Okay, this borealis would be the northern lights, australis would be the southern lights. And these lights, what they're due to is charged particles raining down on the Earth from the sun. And as these charged particles crash into Earth's magnetic field, they give off light. And the magnetic field is most intense at the poles, so that's where you get the most intense light shows. So really something to see. Now, the outermost layer is going to be called the exosphere. And exo means outermost. This layer goes on and on and on until it sort of just blends in with outer space. And that's going to be it for the atmosphere.